Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Valhalla X27. It's almost 8.30 a.m. in the morning, and I uh, thought I'd start doing some uh, video casts, podcasts, uh, blog casts. Not sure what do you what do you call it. What, what do you what do you call it when you uh, put together some talk on uh, YouTube, but it's not on a podcast? Is that still a podcast? I don't know. We'll call it a game cast or a blog cast. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Anyway, just wanted to. Uh, talk about EVO 2017. I showed up on uh, Friday and had a lot of fun with it. It's still going on today. Um, hadn't been there before, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to see so much concentration on fighting games in one event. <clears throat> and EVO's been going on now for, I think, something crazy, like 20 years. I remember them selling DVDs of the event way long, way long before there was streaming or even... Uh, um, advanced internet like we're used to today so anyway that said um yeah you know the show floor was cool it's it's almost become i don't know how it's been in past years but it's almost become its own event uh similar to a playstation experience or an e3 of course not as large but in, in that same regard and that they've got new games being shown on the floor uh for you know prospective buyers uh, one of the big ones was Dragon Ball Z Fighter, and that game I think made some huge waves with E3 this past summer. The game looks fantastic. The animation looks crazy. That said, I didn't really go over and check it out. It was a massive, massive mob of people um, checking it out. It was right across from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite um, area. Um, on that note, there is a there there was some video that uh, was uh, tweeted out to me. Um, by uh, someone I follow, someone who follows me, and it had somebody um, with the camera showing just how massive the mob was for Street Fighter, or I'm sorry, Dragon Ball Fighter Z versus the crowd or lack thereof from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, if you watch that video, take note that this very much looks like the beginning of the day when they just let people into the event. People start flooding towards you know one event or the other. Um, yes. There was a huge mob of people for Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and by the time I got there, it was still there. However, um, if you think that there wasn't a large group of people from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, you'd be dead wrong. There was still huge lines for that, um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. People have the demo at home. Uh, maybe it's just a storyline demo, and this was their only chance to play a versus. So yeah, the mob wasn't nearly as crazy, but to say that... Uh, there was nobody checking out Marvel's Capcom Infinite would be um, incorrect. Anyway, uh, what else was going on there? We found, uh, you know, I was uh, there with Infernal26. You guys know him from my streams on Monday, Salty Throwdown. Uh, we went and checked out uh, the Namco booth. They had some cool stuff there. They had a uh, Hey Hachimishima team jersey, which I almost considered buying. But we found something a lot cooler there. They had a Dark Souls 3 shirt, not just any shirt, but they had the, um, I don't know if you guys remember, when Dark Souls 3 first launched, they had, uh, they had, um, someone put together some almost like 80s retro VHS art style as the cover, okay? They had that on a shirt, and we were like, oh, yeah, we gotta have this, right? <clears throat> Looked super awesome. We got it. Um, what else were they doing over there? They had a lot of stuff over there. They had a lot of cool shirts they were selling over there, man. Lots of Bloodborne stuff, lots of Dark Souls stuff, Dark Souls. Um, if I felt like spending more money, I certainly could have done it in that section. They were also giving away a signed Tekken 7 Collector's Edition. Don't know who got that. I think they did that yesterday. They probably called my number and I wasn't there. Yeah, so as far as the show floor, uh, what else? On my way out, I um, stopped by to pick up a pint glass and a shot glass with Evo, but uh, I picked up the, I, I literally picked up the, the glass when I was in wine, and the uh, the weight of the pint glass just felt cheap to me. It's like it's like they decided to cut back on the amount of glass that goes into a pint glass, uh, and all, it almost felt half plastic. So I didn't bother with that. Same thing with the shot glasses. They felt really cheap. Um, I mean, I don't know what you guys like drinking out of, but when I drink them, glass of beer like to have it be made of glass right so skipped on that um 
the event as a whole I thought was fairly organized. I was actually surprised as to how well it moved along. So in, in, in talking about the pools, each pool I think had two monitors dedicated to it. And I don't want to say there's at least 12 people per pool, right? I think, uh, and I'm okay, so I'm only talking from um, the perspective of having played Injustice 2. It's the only game I signed up for. Um, you guys know from watching my stream, I don't play anything nearly as much as Injustice 2. And uh, judging from my results, I probably need to play Injustice 2 more. So I'm playing <clears throat> in Injustice 2 pools. They've got uh, a couple monitors per pool. Uh, I'm there at about uh, 2 o'clock to check out Infernal's pool t at uh, 4. Infernal did good, man. He, uh, I think he won 3, lost 2. I think he had he won his last match, he would have made it to day 2. Um, and then uh, I jump in there, and you know, one thing I've found is that my my performance in these live events is is so caca compared to um, how I do online. Now I'm not you know burning up the uh, uh, leaderboards or anything online either, but um, so much more comfortable pulling off combos. So my first match was uh, against a gentleman named. BXA Biohazard, and I knew I knew it was gonna be a hurdle, right? Because I looked him up, and I was like, "Yeah, this guy plays with a lot of people," and um, he was playing Scarecrow. I need, you know, Scarecrow's just a beast to begin with. I knew it was gonna be trouble, right? So, um, you know, of course I tried my damnedest, but he had my number, so I just tried to ease into things, try to get comfortable. I landed some decent stuff, but never ever had a uh, great advantage. I just got just got smoked, man. He had my number. Props to him. Uh, after that, really interesting thing happened. So many people didn't show up to the pools. I think we had at least four or five people that weren't, weren't showing up. The referee was calling names. It was like Bueller, Bueller, and um, yeah, nobody was showing up. So they got um, they got a loss. They got a loss. They got thrown into the loser bracket. They got a loss again. Those that were there got moved up. Uh, which was great for me because I'd already lost, and then I think I gained a win from someone not being there. And uh, the strangest thing happened. I sit down, and uh, I'm in a match with somebody. I just got scorched by this guy's Superman, so it's one to z one to zero in a uh, three out of five set. And then this guy comes by and uh, uh, informs the ref that uh, he was late from another game. Fair enough. But uh, someone dropped the ball in informing our ref about that guy being late because he was obviously in the upper echelon of some other pool and for some other game that had rolled over, right? But then the ref, instead of just, you know, taking care of it right there, he, he's like, oh, you're going to have to ask uh, Valhalla, which is me. And uh, I, I asked him, I was like, I'm like, dude, we're in the middle of a set. What are you talking about? We're in the middle of a set and you want us to rewind the, rewind the bracket? I'm like, if it's up to me, I'm going to say no. Now, before I, you know, but, you know, before I say that, you know, I, I consider and I'm like, you know, I don't really care. I, I want to play some games. If this dude's good, so be it. I'm here to play whoever, and, and and I'd have to play good people down the road anyway. But at the same time, it's like we're talking about two uh, brackets later, right? You know, first bracket, loser's bracket, second part of loser's bracket, right? So the guys missed a number of matches. We would have to rerun the match. And then it'd be totally unfair to the guy who just scorched me with Superman to lose his one win over me, which might prevent him from proceeding on. So I just said, yeah, man, I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's no. And then I looked at the ref and I was like, it's your call. I mean, you're the ref. You're the ref. You know, if you say we roll it back, if you want to do all the stupid paperwork that's required for that, whatever. But he said no. Rightfully so, he said no. He should have said no in the first place. Um... Yeah, but I guess um, then this dude and his other buddy proceeded to be a dick, curse this guy out, um, and they got back in the tournament. Good for them. Uh, one of the guys was from Greece or something like that. Madsen, maybe? What was his name? Madsen and Nivik? They got back in. They did very well. Good for them. Uh, I think it was more of a clusterfuck for, for Evo handling it. The guy who should have informed our ref dropped the ball. Uh, and letting us know that someone should have been late. Uh, my suggestion is for Evo, if you're listening, 
when you've got multiple people. Now, before I get into this, I think if you're going to sign up for a lot of events, it's your fucking responsibility to make sure you make it to your events, right? That said, if you are the Evo people, putting these people that are in multiple events, especially the big name guys, put them at the end of the bracket so they don't play up front. Put them at the end of whatever pool is just getting started so that if there is overlap between the games, they do not have an issue. That would be very helpful. And they're, they're clearly placing these bigger names in separate pools from one another to begin with, so I know for a fact they can put them at the end. They, can't, they Don't give me that randomized nonsense. So I think that would be helpful to the players, especially the guys traveling overseas that are sponsored. I get it. You don't want to miss an event. It's probably big money for you. So that was that. So that was interesting. So, um, yeah, and talking about this second match, uh, this guy's Superman was just kicking my ass, right? Superman's tough regardless of whose hands he's in, right? Um, and I'm running Swamp Thing. You know, I, I was practicing Swamp Thing. I wanted to do really well with Swamp Thing. Probably, the consensus is, is that Swamp Thing is probably the one of the worst characters in the game. His startups are slower than shit. His vine grab couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. It's really good when it does. It's a ton of damage. Um, he's got a string that I don't think anybody bothers with because the, the initial startup is 30. 30 frames. Half a second. Half a second will kill you in a fighting game. Um, what else? I mean, he's got a lot of good stuff. I mean, he's actually got some really good mix-ups. He's, um, he's got a couple of strings that go low. He's got... Um, um, some decent uh, starters with his 1-1, one, one, his back 2. His forward 2-3 is amazing. It's a, uh, it's a mid to overhead that you can then mix up with uh, the log kick, which is a low. Um, his back forward 3, the non-meter burn is really good on recovery. So if you're looking to pressure and you're not getting that hit, you, you fire that off and on block, you're going to be relatively safe to attack. Relatively. So he's got some good stuff, but um, he certainly needs some help. When you can pull off the Abigail's Garden in the corner and trap your opponent, prevent them from dashing or, or jumping, it feels so good. It feels so good. It feels like all that all that hard work you've done to actually get near your opponent with Swamp Thing has, has paid off. So anyway, I played Swamp Thing. I was just determined to run Swamp Thing, but this guy was kicking my ass with Superman. You know, in fact, I should have switched up against um, BXA Biohazard. And maybe played Dr. Fate. I've had decent luck with Scarecrow using Dr. Fate online. Um, don't know. Don't know. I should have mixed it up. I should have um, maybe considered Bane a lot more. Bane's my um, my uh, other character I use a lot. And I do fairly well with him. But um, I was uh, really concerned with uh, zoning. Um, not sure if Swamp Thing's much better against that sort of thing. But... Anyway, yeah, so I switched up to Cyborg, and I managed to, this guy had me 2-0, and and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of this tournament if uh, I don't get this. And so I switched up to Cyborg, and uh, just practically outzoned him, and in the last match, he switched up to Green Lantern. Um, and, you know, I was still dropping combos, like, real weird, man. Like, I was going 1-1-3, one, one, and uh, my buddy mentioned to me that maybe it was the uh, monitor refresh rate. I think it was a combination thing. I think it was, you know combination of nerves and stage fright and monitor refresh and um just uh you know the whatever tension comes from a, a a live match but i was you know hitting my 113 and trying to go to my sonic blast and i was just dropping the 1-1 one, one. and i was like fuck anyway i started to get my rhythm a little bit towards the end of these because you know you're six matches in you start to relax he switched up to green lantern and uh you know i went pretty charge crazy with cyborg my cyborg is fairly aggressive um and uh, made sure i took it so that was that then um at this point the pools are moving pretty quick you're kind of just you're not even really getting up and um standing around much they've got things ready to go i sit back down with um guy whose handle is mega hyper and i gotta make a purpose of actually asking people their names you know, um, BXA Biohazard, good game. The second guy I played, I don't recall his name. Um, good game to him. 
and the next guy, Mega Hyper. If there's a if there's a set of games I could have recorded or, or would have wanted to record to watch again, it would have been this one. He played Black Adam, and I knew this was it, man. I didn't even ask about it, but I knew this could be the match to get me in a day two. And um, we had some we had some great matches, man. Um, I think he beat me three to zero. Yes, I think that's I think that's right. He scorched me. But uh, I, I made him work for it, man. I did. I tried to stay in his face the whole time, not give Black Adam any room whatsoever. I probably should have, should have switched it up again. I should have switched it up. But uh, I was determined to uh, play Swamp Thing. Character I like. Uh, that's, that's who I wanted to go down with, man. <laughs> that's how I wanted to play. Swamp Thing, right? Just like Goro and NKX. That's, that's my character. But uh, good game to him. Good game to the... Uh, the Gentleman before him and uh, BXA Biohazard before that. So that was my first day at Evo. A lot of fun. We actually got to tune into a couple matches between our matches, and the uh, the big stage setup is crazy, man. The audio you can just the the hits from the characters is just thumping, man. I mean, like it's just the audio and it's just blasting. It's it's really really cool, really cool. I didn't even watch any of the um, matches for Injustice yesterday. I heard there was some pretty crazy uh, turnouts. I uh, heard Sonic Fox got beat at the end by uh, Honeybee. Some crazy flash action. heard there was some grod action. I gotta get caught up on, on these and, and watch them. I'll need to uh, talk to everybody in my stream about them. But um, yeah, man, Injustice 2, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Gotta get better, gotta work on some things. Uh, got to uh, do some more local tournaments, get that, uh, whatever that stage fright is, it's causing me to drop combos left and right, man. Got to get rid of it. So that's that. Um, today they've got Street Fighter V going on. I'll probably tune into that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. There's a game I need to start playing again. King of Fighters 14. There's another game I need to start playing. <laughs> Watching these guys play King of Fighters 14, I'm like, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> there's just no way. These guys are dashing, short jumping, long jumping all over the place. I don't know, man. I don't know. I like I like King of Fighters 14, but uh, I don't know if I've got it in me. Certainly won't find me playing Guilty Gear. Yeah. Anyway, uh, some other things I missed they had on the show floor. Omen of Sorrow looks like a uh, smaller indie fighter. I could be wrong about that, but it looked pretty cool. Uh, they also had the PlayStation 4 exclusive fighting game. I don't remember what that's called, but it's the one with the Golem. It's got some fantasy characters in it. And it's supposedly a super easy fighting game. It's really accessible for everyone to use or play. And that looks really cool. The animation's cool. I'm curious to check it out. It doesn't have um, inputs such as quarter circle forward, down forward, down back forward, etc. It's apparently one button... Uh, special moves. That's interesting. I think that's, um, I could be way wrong here, but that's something more <clears throat> akin to uh, Smash Brothers, right? The Smash Brothers has a pretty huge following. Um, so it, 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 it certainly, a fighting game isn't defined by inputs, right? A fighting game can still be a fighting game um, without having complicated inputs. So we'll see. That looks pretty cool. But yeah, that's it, man. Uh, I want to do it again. I uh, had to, you know, wallow in my sorrow yesterday and uh, contemplate my uh, place in Injustice 2. It was a, it was a kick in the teeth, man. I wanted to do better, but uh, I didn't. Just got to get back to it. I've got a number of characters I need to still work on. Um, top eight, though. Let's talk about the top eight. Aquaman, um, Red Hood. Right? Sonic Fox was playing Red Hood. Flash, Catwoman. Catwoman, no surprise there, man. There's been some beastly Catwomans online to deal with. Some crazy, crazy Catwomans. She's just all over the place, man. She's in your face. She can go full screen with that charge. Lands you into a knockup. She's a beast. She's a beast. Not at all surprised that a uh, Aquaman player took it. Aquaman's tough. Uh, and I heard that he wasn't uh, relying on the zoning. I heard that he was pressure, pressure, and that's really where Aquaman's at, man. I'm telling you, take note. If you're relying on the zoning game of Aquaman, you're missing out. Aquaman's got 
so much stuff to beat you down with. I mean, he's got overheads, lows. He's got that silly Trident Rush that is probably going to get nerfed come the update. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. So we got the update coming, right? And um, they said in a stream recently that they weren't going to do too many balance patches. Now, you know, that seems shocking, but at the same time, they're coming off of Mortal Kombat X where they did a lot of balance patches. They still have the inju first Injustice that they worked off of. I think they've learned a lot. So Injustice 2 right out the gate is pretty good, I would say. It's pretty good. There's a lot of things you could point to that are a problem, such as um, Black Adam's damage, uh, Deadshot's recovery, um, and zoning in general. But at the same time, at the highest level, it didn't seem like zoning was a dominant feature. So I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch the match. I'm just going off what I've been told. It doesn't seem like zoning was dominating at the highest level. It means the rest of us that are losing to zoning need to get our shit together. Um, I still think it's a problem. I think I think that it's it's still heavily skewed towards zoning, and if you're um, unaware of how to deal with it, it's a very frustrating problem to deal with. Characters like Deadshot with their super quick rec recovery, you're working really hard to defeat them, and they're not working nearly as hard to defeat you. Uh, so yeah, that and Black Adam's damage. I think uh, Aquaman's Trident Rush is going to get hit. Uh, I don't think it's from the deep is going to get hit too hard because that's one of his... I think that's one of his only connections into his back three. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Who else? You know, Superman's 4-2-3 is pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's really all that character has. He's 4-2-3, 4-2-3 all day long. Um... I don't know how he'd play if he'd be nearly as effective if that 4-2-3 wasn't. I mean, that's really what he relies on. I think that's all he's got. If they did something with that, I, I don't know. I don't know what they'd do. Maybe um, keep the 4-2-3 as is, but slow down the recovery on his um, ability? I don't know. That kind of ruins that cancel, too. I don't know. That's that's a trick. I don't want that job. What, whoever has that job, that job of balancing the game, I feel for you. That is a shitty job. You know why? Because no matter what you do, people will always complain. Ah, oh, you fucked up this character. You fucked up that character. You made this character better than this character. Why? You'll never get it right. You'll never get it right. Trust me. You'll never get it right in the eyes of the millions and millions of people playing your game. You'll never get it right. That's a shitty job. I feel for you. You turn the needle just this much on one character and boom, everybody's playing Swamp Thing. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, right. Yeah, so all in all, fun. Lots of fun, man. Lots of fun. I want to do it next year. Uh, this year it was just Infernal 26 and I. Next year, hopefully, it'll be Ninjas for Hire. You guys skipped out. Piece of crap. Couldn't do a podcast without talking smack about Ninjas for Hire. But uh, a lot of fun. I think next year I would like to do more than one game, maybe just two. Um, maybe King of Fighters 14. I don't know, something different. We'll see what comes out in the next year. Maybe Dragon Ball Z Fighter, man. That looks crazy. That looks like a lot of fun. The animation looks so good. And uh, I'm not much of a Dragon Ball fan these days in terms of uh, watching it or even thinking about it. But, um, you know, it is cool to see just how accurate they look compared to their comic book and um, animated series counterparts. It's pretty fantastic. We're at that, we're at that point in video games where we have either super sophisticated realism like in Injustice 2 or um, completely accurate descriptions or depictions of characters as they are in their um, other media counterparts. It's pretty awesome. So I'm definitely excited for that one. I hope the cast is big. hope the cast includes uh, Dragon Ball, original Dragon Ball series like Tao Pai Pai, Yamcha, uh, Tien, am I even getting these names right? It's been so long. Yeah. But anyway, game looks good. EO 2017 was awesome. Um, next year we'll, uh, work on doing better. Um, I hope they do more than two years of Injustice 2. I really do. They're on a two-year cycle. I really wish Mortal Kombat X had been back this year. Uh, mainly because I missed it, um, the first two years I didn't go. I don't know how people feel about it that actually were there to play it, but uh, I would have liked to have seen Mortal Kombat. I don't know why a game like Mortal Kombat X couldn't have been there at least three years. Uh, it seems like NetherRealm Studios games have a very small but loyal following. 
you look at the numbers, Street Fighter V, and this is what I think, this is great, right? Everyone complains about Street Fighter V, oh, it sucks, this, this, and this. It's got over 2,000 entries. That is not a sucky game. That is a game that has a lot of competition and a lot of people that still enjoy the competition. So you got that at like over 2,000 players, you got Smash Brothers, whatever, and Smash Brothers, whatever, next after that, and they've got a ton of people. And I think maybe in, um, what is it, fourth or fifth, I don't know who got more Tekken or Injustice 2, but Injustice 2 had like 800 something. And in NetherRealm Studios games is a small but loyal fan base. And uh, I think I think everybody probably would have played uh, Mortal Kombat X also. And that's not to say that everyone who's playing Justice 2 is also playing Mortal Kombat X, but um, I think it still would have been a big pool. I don't know. Yeah, three years, man. Three years is what I'd like to see. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Be sure to check out my stream, twitch.tv forward slash ValhallaX27. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be doing these more often. This is the first of many. I've been threatening to do it. I think I've been putting it off because uh, I've been convincing myself that it was more important to play Injustice 2, which it was, leading up to EVO 2017. But uh, from now on, I want to start doing these uh, blog casts, video casts, podcasts, whatever we're going to end up calling them, and uh, getting them out once a week at least, along with some other things. All right, guys. Enjoy watching EVO 2017 today. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.